Hello again. What we're looking at this time is a possible method for modelling a curved roof in Inventor 2017 involving uh, windows, uh, support beams and cross beams as well. So it's a nice compound curved roof. Let's try diving in. We're sketching a rectangle here first, and we used uh, parameters, uh, 14 meters by 10 meter roof that we're creating here. Those parameters will come in useful later on. And now we're gonna use the freeform tools in Inventor 2016 onwards to sketch on top of this rectangle and create a freeform face here. And then we want to subdivide it. We want square subdivisions here, so, um, we would want 14 by 10 squares, but the maximum you can do is 10. Um, so we have to subdivide once and then subdivide these rectangles again to give us square um, uh, subfaces there. Okay, so we've got 14 by 10 uh, subsquares here. And now that will enable us to have really fine control of how we uh, edit the form of this face. So using the uh, soft modification uh, tick box here, we can choose which of those squares are influenced. And we want to influence uh, all of the, the vertexes there except the outermost ones. And now we can just drag up or type in a, a number for the offset of that uh, sort of domed roof that we're creating. We can also adjust the gradient here uh, to get some different effects if we want, but we want a nice clean, um, normal curve going there okay so we're going to say okay to that and now what we want to do is we want some uh, sketch lines that are going to define the uh, the support beams for this roof so we're going to use planes to do that and so we need a plane that defines the edge of all the windows the window positions so i'm going to pattern these planes and I'm going to use the parameter that I created before for the sketch there to enable me to get 14 windows along that edge. Then I'm going to pattern the plane in this direction. And I'll use the parameter by picking it to get the right number of um, divisions, the right number of windows there as well. Okay, so those planes are defining the window positions. And now I'm going to start a 3D sketch and I'm going to create an intersection curve for where each plane meets that uh, curved face that we just drew. Okay, so it's you know, somewhat of a manual process, but you've got some nice right click options there to right click and say OK each time. So it doesn't take me too long if I speed the video up a bit to actually create all those intersection curves you can see being created there in the 3D sketch. So I need to do this in the other direction as well. Okay, so now if I uh, switch those planes off, I should be able to see the 3D sketch I've created, which will help me to define those um, support beams later on. So what I've got right now is a single curved surface and a 3D sketch containing all the intersection lines. But I need to do a bit more work here in my master part that I'm creating. I actually need to split that surface into the individual windows. So I'm going to use the planes to do that. And again, this is a somewhat of a manual operation. Couldn't think of a better way of doing it than this, but maybe you guys can. I'm going to use the split tool. And I'm just going to pick the plane and then pick the face and then right click and say OK. So it's just pick the plane um, and pick the face and right click and say OK or apply rather. So plane, face, right click, apply. It takes me a bit of time to get into it. <laughs> Probably should have sped the video up a bit more at this point. Ah, oh, there we go. 
And let's do in the other direction. So when we're doing the other one here, we're actually splitting multiple faces. So it's very important that we um, make sure we choose that split all option there because we've already split the faces in the other direction. Otherwise, we'll have to split 14 times to get each square, if that makes sense. Okay, so we've split that surface. If I just turn it back on, there's our um, individual faces defining the, the squares of the window. And now we are, we've got most of the information that we need in this master part to help actually create an assembly out of it. So what I'm going to do next is uh, show you the manual method for how we would actually shrink those windows because they're not all perfectly sized. They're actually all undersized a little bit and they've got a border between them. So the manual method to this would be to create an offset plane like I just did and then to um, find that plane again and turn the surface back on and then to actually use that plane to split all of those surfaces. So I'll pick the plane, pick that split all command and apply that and I've split all those small faces running along there and then all those faces are not required because I need to shrink the window so what I'd actually have to do is to pick them all and delete faces there. Okay and that would have to be repeated well 14 plus 10 times or more in fact for both sides so that would be something of a manual operation there I'll, uh, I'll just show you one more um, example of doing this the manual way. So I'd use the split command. I'd say I want to split all faces. I'd then turn off that plane that I use for splitting just for convenience perhaps. And then I'd use the delete face command, pick all the faces and say delete. And so you can see in the corner down here on the left, bottom left there, we have got a window that's you know the right kind of size that it would need to be with the border that we need around the edge um, then I would be able to use the thicken offset command and thicken it to the required thickness and I could repeat that if I had multiple uh, windows there as well multiple uh, sort of um, window panes so that was the manual way of doing it, which uh, which would take some time on a roof of this size. So we've taken the time to write an iLogic, some iLogic code that will do exactly what we just did, but uh, automate it. It's quite a, a good scenario to automate in that case. So we've created the offset planes with the code. Now the code's running through and, well, it's thickening each, uh, each window. And then it's actually... Um, going through and splitting uh, and trimming the, the required border using those planes that the code also put in. Okay, so we put quite a big border on there, but uh, this definitely saves us a bit of time. If I turn off those uh, planes now, then we've got some shrunken windows with the required borders. Okay, so those windows should be a bit thicker, but uh, you get the idea for this this uh, example model. Okay, so now we're going to use the Make Components tool because what we've got in this part is we've got 140 solids, solid bodies, and we need to use Make Components in order to turn each of those solid bodies into a part file that can be detailed on its own or um, used in a bill of materials somehow um, and it places those into an assembly for us. So very handy command the uh, make components um, tool and you can see the individual part files that we've been created here and placed into the assembly. So now we're in the assembly. I also um, I think want to place the master part into this assembly once I've saved it. So um, I'm going to use the place command and I'm going to just place it grounded at the origin and uh, I'm just going to edit that in context of the assembly and turn on the stuff that I actually need to start creating these beams 
Okay, so using the frame generator tool, I'm going to pick the 3D intersection lines in a 3D sketch that I created just a minute ago, and I'm going to create an I beam that runs along each of the longer um, longer lines here. Okay, so I can choose the offset that I want for that beam, of course. Frame generator will work just fine with uh, complex curved beams like we've got here. And I'll generate each of those curved beams. Okay, so now what I need, now I've generated those beams, is I need to generate some cross beams between them. So here's where I'm actually going to use that split surface that I created before in the master part. I'm going to turn that on and we're going to turn off the solid bodies. So here's that original split surface and I'm going to use that in order to define the individual cross beams because these aren't single beams that run the entire length of the part of the uh, roof. They're actually divided, subdivided by those I-beams. So I need to turn the I-beams off and then later on I'm actually going to have to trim those beams to the I-beams. So let's uh, bring up the frame generator tool again and let's just select uh, multi-select by dragging a box where we want those uh, cross beams to go. Okay, so we're going to be generating, uh, my maths is going to fail me here, but uh, quite a lot of uh, sub-beams there. I guess it's 10 times 12 or something like that. Okay, and they're all individual part files, but what they're not at the moment is trimmed to the I-beams. So what we would need to do is to turn the I-beams back on. And then we'd actually need to go in, and this would be something of a manual process, is actually trim, multi-trim multi those beams. You see there they don't actually uh, line up flush with the I-beams. We'd actually have to pick um, all the beams we want to trim. So we can do a whole row of them all in one go. And then we right-click and say uh, continue. And then we pick the face we want to trim these beams to. And then we right click and say apply. And that's a process we're going to have to repeat for, uh, for each end of each row of cross beams. Uh, you see I've trimmed this beam uh, in, in the wrong direction. So I'll have to uh, delete that one, uh, delete that trim and do it the correct way. I picked the wrong end of the beam there. Okay, that's correct. So I need to repeat that, as I said, um, for the entire roof. And here's the finished result. And so all I need to do now is to turn on the display of the windows and uh, turn off the display of the master part. And um, it would need a bit more tweaking, of course. That board is not, not right, perhaps, and the frame members need moving around a little bit but uh, hopefully the, this gives you some indication of how quickly you can uh, create this kind of layout geometry in Inventor using the latest tools in there. So I'm just uh, changing the, the colour of the windows to something clear to look a little bit better. Job done. Hope you find this very useful. Thanks a lot.